So the problem that we have at the moment is that the responsibility for trade is what's known as an EU competence. So it means that the EU deals with all trade agreements for all the countries within the EU. As long as we remain within the EU, we cannot do a, a bilateral deal with India. We have such good relations with India and with many Indians who are investing here and indeed Indians who have made money here who are investing back in India um, that we could easily tie up a deal between the two countries which is much easier than it is for the EU which has 28 different countries to cater for. And you're also very pessimist about the India-EU trade agreement. I am very pessimistic about it. I hear nothing but bad reports that, to use President Obama's queue, it's at the end of the queue of all the uh, agreements that the EU is trying to negotiate at the moment and it's not going at all well and most people think it's virtually dead and will not happen. So if we want to lower tariffs between the United Kingdom and India, um, then we've got to get out of the EU to do that. And you think once that happens, it will be far easier to do the bilateral treaty and it won't take eight years like it did with the EU? Yes, it will be much easier to do that because then we're only negotiating on behalf of one country um, and we have our interests, India have theirs, and therefore it's much easier for us to then reach agreement, which should be based really on lowering tariffs wherever possible. A lot of Indian investors and business look at UK as a gateway to Europe. Yeah. Um, that won't happen if there's a Brexit. No, what do you have to say to that? No, come on, it's quite untrue that that won't happen. Um, it, it, people are making ridiculous noises about how long it will take to negotiate a free trade treaty with the EU. But we're already um, trading with the EU, so we don't have to draw up new rules. The rules are already there. So it will be very easy to actually establish a free trade treaty with the EU. As they sell far more to us than we do to them, that will not be difficult. There are also fears of not just a capital influx out of EU from investors uh, that come from India, but also human capital that the country might lose because of this closed nature that you're advocating of, the, uh, of Britain standing alone. And people cannot do trade with EU or the human capital cannot move around. Do you think that would be difficult in terms well, at of... At the moment, when it comes to human capital, the situation we have is there is discrimination against Indians in favour of citizens of the EU. And you see this because, as I mentioned earlier, if you go out into Westminster, you will not find Indian beggars on the streets in, in Westminster. You will find Romanian beggars who've come here um, with no qualifications worth talking about, uh, and they choose to beg on the streets here. It wouldn't be possible for somebody to come from India under the constraints that we have and beg on the streets in Westminster because we would be very keen to take people with qualifications who wanted to come here to work. Um, my final question, do you think a Brexit would have saved Tata Steel in the UK? Have a would have saved Tata Steel in the UK? Um, well, I th it could have done because the whole business of Tata Steel brought in the question of government subsidies um, and we would have been much freer if we wanted to, to subsidise Tata Steel to, to keep it running. So um, it probably would be easier if we left the EU um, to be able to do that. Find us on Facebook at facebook.com slash etnow and don't forget to click the like button. You can also follow us on Twitter at etnowlive. To stay updated with all our programming, hit the subscribe button on our YouTube channel by logging on to youtube.com slash user slash etnow.